Hey, welcome guys. In this video, I'm going to teach you about 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G mobile technology. Now, a lot of people are using cell phones. In fact, in case you didn't know this, there are more active cell phones in the world than there is the entire population of people. Pretty crazy, right? So there's a lot of people out there with two or three cell phones. So the G in all these numbers stands for generation, right? So let's start with 1G. So it really got popular in the 1980s. So it was built on an analog system and it can only do phone calls. Now there was a lot of limitations to it in terms of like say range, there was very little security. Anyone could kind of listen in on your phone call and what you were doing. So it's just like the starting era of mobile wireless technology. Now 2G was more into the 1990s is when it got pretty popular and is based on a digital technology which had more security, but also allowed some additional functionality. So 1G was more on voice calls, 2G allowed that, as well as texting and MMS messaging. Now, if you're not sure what MMS and SMS is, I do have a video on explaining what that is. You can find a link to it in the video description. So you have some pretty slow speeds with 2G, even sending out MMS was incredibly slow and horrible. Then we move into 3G, which is like the early 2000s. So this is where we have the era of smartphones really picking up pace. 3G is where you get real mobile data. You can actually surf the internet properly. You can look at HTML websites. You can download some applications. I mean, it was still pretty slow, but at the time when it was released, it was like the greatest thing ever. I mean, the, the main limitation of 3G technology was that if you were to get a weak signal, the internet would be next to nothing because eh? the internet speed of it was fairly slow at the time. And then we move over to 4G, which is a stage we're kind of in right now. So here's the thing with 4G technology, you know, this is the fourth generation in the 2010s, kind of, if you will, that's when it started getting popular and it brings in even faster mobile internet speed. You can load like HD videos on YouTube. It was a lot easier to accomplish these things. It just became this great convenience factor. Now, when the industry set the standard for 4G, it was originally set on two conditions. Now, the first condition is that if you're in a moving car, you should theoretically be able to get 100 megabits per second, which is pretty fast. That's actually really fast, a lot faster than some people's home internet. The other condition was that if you're staying still, you're not moving, you should theoretically be able to get one gigabit speed download per second. That Yeah, you heard me correctly. That was the industry standard set for 4G. Almost no one has met that criteria. So why are all these cell phone companies claiming to have 4G technology when they actually don't? You see, the consortium that set up the standard realized that this is near impossible to achieve because switching from 1G to 2G technology was very expensive. Switching from 2 to 3, even more expensive, and 3 to 4, even more costly, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So why is everyone saying 4G technology? Isn't that kind of cheating the system with false advertisement? Yes and no. You see, the industry standard kind of just lowered down. They're like, you know what? Reaching a gigabit per second download speed for someone on their cell phone is just not that easy. So what they did is they introduced LTE. Now, LTE is where things get really confusing between LTE and 4G. They are not the same thing, kind of. You see, LTE is not really a technology. It's long-term evolution. That's what it stands for. It's basically saying that, hey, we're going to implement LTE, long-term evolution, into 4G technology. We're gonna keep making our current internet speed of 4G better and better and better until we can hopefully one day reach one gigabits per second. So the standard to say that you have 4G technology on say AT&T, Vodafone, Rogers, whatever, was kind of allowed. It's kind of accepted that, you know what, it's still way faster than 3G. You can't reach one gigabits per second, but using LTE to kind of advance what we currently have, let's just say we have 4G and kind of let it be okay. One thing to keep in mind though, is that any technology you have, so let's say for example, if you have a 3G phone, it will not work with 4G cell phone signal. You have to have these special hardware chips that allow you to receive those special signals from the other technology. So if you have a 2G phone, it will not work with 3G and 4G. So where does 5G come in? This is the big question because right now a lot of carriers are starting to advertise, especially in the US, but if we can't reach proper 4G speed, why are they saying 5G? Well, there's no standard for 5G yet. In fact, there's mixed information all over the internet if you try to research it. The theory here is that with 5G, you should be able to open an HD video and buffer the entire thing on YouTube in seconds. So even loading 4K videos, you won't have to wait for that loading icon to go. It'll just load 
instantly. It should be very fast, seamless. And there's gonna be heavy emphasis on smart products. This is not just your smart home products receiving a signal from your cell phone carrier. This could be autonomous cars, self-driving cars. This could be smart street lights. This could be anything. Now there are a lot of challenges. The biggest one of course is money. As usual, it's a very costly investment. The other thing is that 5G signal, the way it works, is that they don't really reach that far away and there could be a lot of cross-channeling, a lot of interference with other devices connecting to 5G. So what they're gonna have to do, long story short, to keep it very simple, is implement mini towers everywhere. So with 3G and 4G towers, sometimes you can spot them from very far away if you're driving on the highway, for example. The idea with 5G towers is that they're gonna be very small. In fact, it's possible they might be implemented in some light posts. They might have a box attached to a light post and you won't even know that's a 5G tower right there. That's how small they're gonna be, but they're gonna be more in numbers spread out throughout your city, for example, to allow all those various devices connecting to kind of bounce signal off the nearest communication tower. So 5G technology, some companies are theorizing that it might be implemented in 2020. Personally, it's very possible they might get to 5G technology in 2020, but I don't think they'll actually achieve it fully at that time. And the carriers might just be like, hey, we have 5G cell phone technology, when in reality it's just like 4G. It didn't really achieve it that well, but they're kind of like set the bar lower because they're like, wow, this is actually much more difficult to achieve than we realize. It's more of a marketing gimmick at this point. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.